In this video, I'm turning your submitted drawings into realistic adaptations. Cute things, terrifying things, nothing is too crazy here. Fasten your seatbelts and then let's get straight into it. Textures and backgrounds and life that I must fetch. I'm feeling this vibe. Shadows and lights start to bring it alive. Yo, it's time to cut it up and I can't believe my eyes. This is what I call for your list of five. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with yet another episode of Realistified and make sure to stick around because today we have some pretty interesting drawings. If you want to send your drawing for the next episode, make sure to send it to realistified at bennyproductions.net, subscribe and most importantly, smash the bell to stay notified about future videos at all times. For today, I'm kind of ditching the space theme since Realistified is more about creatures anyway, so let's just get into the first one. Tobias sent me this drawing. Hello, my name is Tobias. I wanted to ask you if you could make a cool picture of my drawing. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you for this haunting drawing. I feel like this one is going to be more towards my early realistified submissions, which is a good thing to be sure. So let's get straight into it. Here we are in Photoshop. We're going to start using our old way um, by tracing the shape of this guy first. So I'm going to grab the pen tool like this and go all around his body. At first, it's just going to be the main body because we don't need any of the other stuff yet. There you go. Then let's make this a beautiful solid color. The color doesn't really matter. And then using this shark, I'm going to fill it with uh, this shark skin texture. I do think, however, we are going to need some puppet warp to fix uh, the shape because this, of course, is never going to fit. Oh, that looks interesting. Yep, that is a masterpiece in itself. It is just getting better and better. Lord almighty, save my soul. Now, this one we can put inside our previous shape. <laughs> okay, just gonna make sure this area is filled in as well so we can move on to the next step. Dude, you can still see the eye of the- oh, that's- that's cursed. Okay, so this is his main body. Now, of course, this has to be blue, but we'll fix that later. First, what else? I guess we should now make his arms, so let's trace the shapes of those. Okay, so those are the uh, other limbs. And then I think that's pretty much it for his main body. Just we now have to fill these with the same texture, of course. And for these, we can use the fins. I think that could look pretty good. And of course, we can't forget about the tail. Now, before doing all the shadows and shading and everything, I first want to drop in the skeleton part. Because as you can see, his back is wide open. So we gotta recreate that. And I'm thinking this one will do just that. Then we have to make sure this kind of matches with the skeleton photo. And just do something like this. I'm not really sure but i guess we'll just try something there you go so now that we have the main stuff in place let's go and add some shadows these shadows are done the same way i do all my shadows using a darkened exposure adjustment layer and painting over the desired areas Since I thought this one would do well as an underwater creature, I decided the light was gonna come from above. Not only is this easier, it also makes the most sense for a setting like this one. I added a black shape, which later was gonna be the mouth. Around it, I applied some more shadows to make it look a little more convincing. To add some lighter accents, I did the same thing but with a brighter layer. This usually gives some extra depth, that being the exact thing I was looking for. Obviously, guys, as you can see, this is looking a lot better than it did before. Um, let's see what's next. I think the eye is a good thing to add at this point. I have this beautiful eyeball. Let's see how big it should be. Right about like this is pretty much perfect. Let's see. Maybe rotate it a little bit. Then right below it, we have to add a tiny little shadow to the skin. And then to make it 3D, we can add another layer right next to it as if it's really like an eye socket. Obviously we want to add some shadows to the eye as well in a very similar fashion something like this there you go truly demonic then let's draw the shape of the uh, thing I don't even know at this point what this is called now this of course has to be black like this oh that's terrifying we definitely need some shadows on the skeleton of course as well I actually kind of forgot that so let's first make the ambient touching shadows right here 
and then move on to a bigger one. Just like that, very nice and soft. How about below this, we put a texture like this to indicate that there's flesh below it, which there should, of course, be flesh. This needs a shitload of shadows again, so uh, let's get to it. Absolutely beautiful. Then in general, I feel like this one should be a bit darker, something like this, so it's nice and subtle, shouldn't be too visible, I feel like. Just like that. That is pretty cool, not gonna lie. Now, wouldn't it be cool to make this nice bloody stuff? Like, <laughs> just make this a bit more dirty by adding some blood to it, which would be realistic since there's literally open flesh right below it. Yes, check that out. Maybe we can even do the same thing, but on the skin instead. Like the skin around it, that is, to make it just a bit more... Yes, I love that. This brush, by the way, is fantastic. It's uh, Kyle's Real Oils. I think that's a standard brush, I'm not even sure. Just like that. Oh, this is cool. Cool, I love this. We may as well add some of this to his mouth as if he just ate something, which, I mean, he looks like he could eat you. And maybe like he stuck his fin in some animal. That would be cool. Add some blood here as well. Hell yes. <laughs> Look at that. I know he's underwater and this technically wouldn't stick so good, like blood to his fins, but who cares? It's badass. And that is what this is all about. And maybe like even around the inside of his eye, just right here to make it a bit more disgusting because it's never disgusting enough, that's for sure. By the way, I completely forgot he's supposed to be blue. So there you go. That's a bit better. It's a bit strange, but it's it's fine. And we just have to make sure that the fins are blue as well. Now, this is looking pretty sick. His eye has to be yellow, by the way. I almost forgot. Let's make this something like this. Not too vibrant, but a little tint of yellow to make sure it's the same. And then there's one massive thing left, the teeth. And those I am going to do right about now. If you watch this series more often, you know how much I love making teeth. It's simply an ass ton of work nobody should ever have to do, but oh well, I guess I did it anyway. I placed all the teeth in their position and added shadows to each one. This took ridiculously long. alone weren't good enough though, I also wanted to see the flesh holding them together. And you already guessed it, this is also some simple shadows to add depth to it. It had to be super dark and subtle. Now, to finish the whole thing off, I made the underwater effect a little more realistic by adding light rays and particles, mainly just to make it a bit more alive. This went paired with some very subtle glows and eventually a camera raw filter. Very, very cool. Like I said, this one kind of turned out like my previous submissions, which I like a lot. Thank you for submitting. Now onto the next one for today, which was sent in by Shutterbug. This is a picture drawn by my friend and I want to surprise him with your editing skills. Well, I'll do my best because this is definitely a unique drawing. Let's get straight into it. I decided to start with the wooden areas for no particular reason at all. I thought this branch would work fine for his arm and what better way to match the shape than by using our good friend Liquify. I tried matching the shape of my branch with his arm and then cut off the bottom area because we don't need that. I copied that branch and did a similar thing for his lower arm except using warp this time. The two pieces, to my surprise, fit together pretty much instantly. And to make the whole thing a bit more convincing, I applied some more shadows on the arm as a whole. By now, you probably know how important that really is. The fingers I extended using the same branch and for some reason these turned out very good. I applied the necessary shadows and this brought it to life big time. 
Now that the arm was pretty much complete, I moved on to the remaining wood areas, that being half of his chest. For this, I used a tree trunk texture. At first, it looked a bit strange, but this would be fixed later. It's pretty obvious, I merged the two elements together using a bunch of shadows and decreased its vibrance for better colors. Now that all the wooden parts were complete, I moved on to the volcanic areas. The process for his leg is kinda similar to the arm. I used a rock 3D model from Envato Elements and first tried connecting it to the wood. This is tricky since, well, wood and stone aren't often organically connected in nature, so... Anyways, I made the rock darker for this volcanic look and used another big rock for his lower leg. With the entire leg in one piece, I decided to add the lava towards the end. Cause now it was time for his face. I used a human skull and a ton of liquefied to get that same shape. This was kind of a mess and I probably could have done this in a better and easier way, but oh well. I kind of repeated the process by cutting off pieces to complete the whole skull and this sort of did the job. To clean up the mess I created, I added shadows, and at this point I kind of lost hope because it started to look like absolute shit. For some reason, however, shadows kept me going. It took a while, but slowly it turned into something acceptable. When all of it was in place, I added two little glowy eyeballs in these sockets to finish it up. Quite simple, just a solid color with some glow effects on top. Then the stone arm and body on the left. To be fair, this is all very similar to what we've seen so far. Using an image and then cutting it up into pieces, creating a full new shape that way. The stones had kind of a plastic look, which I didn't mind because I wanted to have a clear contrast between the arms and his legs, since those are rock as well. As you can see at this point I also added the left leg already the same way I created the right one. Now I was gonna make that little bush on his chest and it's pretty straightforward just mainly some shadows and masking. Coloring comes later. I am happy it's finally getting some shape because the right side on its own looks interesting to say the very least. Now I added the lava to his legs. This isn't anything special just a lava image set to screen and then painted the areas I wanted and well there you go. Now of course there's one massive thing we're missing right now, the bushes on his back. Let's get into it. I collected some bush 3D models and put them all in there behind the creature. These didn't require a lot of editing other than shadows. Since they're behind him we don't need to make any weird connection points. I also chose two different types of bushes to get some variety in there and this looked pretty nice in the end. I know what you're thinking, I still haven't added the waterfalls yet, but that's on purpose. Off screen I tried adding something of the sort, but it just didn't work. It hides a bunch of stuff I just don't want to see hidden. I guess I just think the creature pops more without them, so that's why I left them out. I did however add some extra IV on his arms. Then to finish it up a camera raw filter and then I'd say we're pretty much there. I guess that is looking pretty cool. Back to the studio.
Big thanks to Shutterbug for submitting this drawing, it is highly appreciated. Then the final drawing for today was sent in by Andre. Hi Benny, I'm a big fan of you and your YouTube channel. I have completed this drawing of my toxic mushroom and I would love to see it brought to life. I hope you like it. Liking is a small word. Let's see what I can turn this into. Now I began with the obvious, the top of the mushroom. For this I used a standard 3D model and warped my way around the shape issue. The inside obviously looks very different so to make that similar I masked away the bottom and used a second image. I tried stitching them together as best I could and eventually that looked fine. Mostly just warp and masking. Now however the stem doesn't match anymore. For this I copied the stem and simply made it bigger. It was all kind of a mess and that wasn't gonna go away anytime soon. I later warped the bottom area to match the drawing and so far I guess we have the right shape. The inside of the mushroom is supposed to be bright blue so I did not hesitate. Using some color balance I tried adding some color to it. Because it was previously dark under there it looked a bit strange. This is why I later decided not to make this blue stuff glowy. I also added a bunch of shadows to uh, honestly I don't even know what I was trying to do here. Now that the base was done I wanted to create the eyes and mouth. For those I made simple shapes. Later I was gonna add shadows and everything to those to make them look better. First however the shadows around him. This is by far one of my favorite things to do it just truly gives shape to things. I just had to make sure it all fit in there organically and slowly but surely it came to life a little bit more. Now to make the eyes pop it's practically the exact same thing we've been doing all over again. A bunch of shadows and also highlights this time around to make them really really shiny. The slime in his mouth is a very similar story, just some simple shapes like the eyes and mouth, to which I added shadows later. For the tricky part, those slimy branches coming out of the base of the mushroom. I wanted to make absolutely sure it wasn't just slime and instead had some solidity to it. That is why I decided to use branches for it to start out with. I used Puppet Warp to make sure it follows that round trail and perfected it using Liquify. Of course some little branches were missing so those I added manually. I made them green to see what that really looks like and that's when I realized we need some shadows and highlights. It's the same stuff as usual, nothing special there. This really helped getting rid of that flat look it had. I also added shadows to make sure it connects nicely with the base of the mushroom. Now obviously this exact same slimy branch I had to make on the right as well. So well that is exactly what I did. the mushroom there's a bunch of stuff flying around. To recreate these slimy elements I made circular shapes all over the place and filled those with the branch image to make sure they match. Afterwards I applied the right lighting and that looked okay, nothing special though. To make the mushroom a little more dirty and beat it up, I added a whole lot of green slime all over the place. This was done with a mixer brush to make sure it looks nice and organic and this truly gave it some life.
Now finally, the environment he's in. I went for the obvious, a forest, and uh, here's exactly how I took care of that. Finally, as usual, a camera raw filter and then we're all set. This isn't my favorite edit, but I guess it's something different for a change and that's always welcome. Back to the studio. there you go ladies and gentlemen those are the drawings for today let me know in the comments down below which one is your favorite and don't forget if you want to send your drawing for the next episode make sure to send it to realistified at bennyproductions.net and then i guess that is pretty much it for today if you like this video make sure to leave a like and a comment and if you enjoy my overall content feel very very free to subscribe because that would mean the world to me and i hope i'll see you in my next video